Hey you guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the best makeup that I felt like I tried in the year 2022. I'm going to be sharing a wide variety of products and I think pretty much every category that I really, really loved. Um, this is my second time filming this. <laughs> I had it all done, all edited, and then I accidentally deleted it. So here we go, man. Here... Here's to round two, baby. Um, I like my hair a little bit better in this one, so I guess that's a that's a plus. Um, but if you're new here, I am Megan, and I'm doing 31 days of content here in December. Normally, I do upload multiple videos a week, so be sure to subscribe, stick around, and usually have a pretty good time. If you like this video at any time while watching, please do give it a big thumbs up. It really does help my channel. And yeah, let's go ahead and jump into the video. Okay, so for starters, one of the best products I felt like I tried throughout 2022 was the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips. I freaking love these, you guys. Um, I have currently three shades. This one is the shade Rose, and this one is brand new. I've already emptied one. That's right. That's how much I loved it. Already emptied one. I have one on my work desk right now that I am working through, and then I have the clear one as well. What I really love about these is that they're easy to just throw in your purse, throw in your bag, whatever. They have a really beautiful sheer tint to them that I like. Um, it gives the lip just a little bit of color and the way they just make your lips literally look so juicy, so glossy, and they are hydrating as hell. So I love that about them as well. Uh, just super comfortable on the lips and super hydrating. The next products I wanted to chat about, and I feel like nobody talks about these. Like, am I the only person that knows about these? They are the NARS uh, Soft Matte Tinted Lip Balms. I have two of them and I love them so much. One of them is a more like pinky tone uh, and the other one's a more brown tone. The more brown tone is the shade intimate so this one right here and then the pinky tone is unrestricted this one and what I really like about these is I love how they come in this like lip balm packaging really just user friendly in my opinion and then I also just love how you get a powder matte finish on the lips when you use these and it looks really nice but you don't get um, the dryness that typically comes with a powder matte, which is like the bonus for me. It truly feels like a hydrating lip balm. These are just like the biggest hidden gem and I highly, highly recommend them if you want a powdered matte look to your lips, but you don't want the whole, you know, shebang of your lips feeling dehydrated and dried out and just uncomfortable these these are for you they are so good i love 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 them the other lip products i tried this year that i absolutely loved is the merit signature lipsticks i have two shades i have the shade slip which is a really beautiful brown tone right there as you can see and then i also have the shade baby which is just a gorgeous like neutral pinky shade right over there and what I like about these, as you can see, they have a little bit more of a hydrated finish, but they are, in my opinion, not really like a traditional lipstick in the fact that they are super comfortable a little bit more on the sheer side. They're not super like thick. They wear down really well. They reapply really well. They're just super comfortable and they look so good on the lips. I love that they give a subtle like gloss effect. Also, the packaging on these is really like heavy weighted, like bougie. I like that about it too. Um, but yeah, love, love, love these. The next product is a gloss and it is from Kaja. I'm actually wearing it today. It is their gloss shot and the shade that I have is pink drink. I had another shade, but I already finished it. As you can see, this has a really beautiful My Lips But Better kind of tint. This shade is um, also very glossy, not sticky, not thick. And this formulation is quite literally 
the most hydrating I have ever tried in my whole life. Like it is so crazy. Like I will just like reapply this at work because it's moisturizing and it feels good. It's like the perfect gloss to have on your desk at all times. Love, love, love this one. I also wanted to chat about the Milani lip oil. I'll pop a photo up there. Um, I don't currently have one in my collection because I finished it, but this is like my favorite lip oil of all time. I had tried it, I don't know, a couple of months ago. My friend Steph actually sent it to me in friend mail and I love the flavor. It's cherry lime. It reminds me of like lip smackers or something when we were younger. So that's fun. It also has a really big doe foot, which I enjoy for lip oils, um, applies really nicely. The shade that I had is red and it has a really sheer subtle tint and the red tint on my lips makes them look fuller and juicier. So I really love that. And then of course it does provide the hydrating effect, which I loved as well. Um, it's great. I love to apply it in the morning and I love to apply it in the evening. A really great lip oil, super affordable, highly recommend it. Next up, we have the Natasha My Dream Lipstick. This packaging is so fun. It's so heavy weighted. It's like clay and then you have the splat. I love that about it. Um, the shade is also absolutely beautiful. It's a really pretty nude on me. It's a very like warm pink, I feel like, but it looks absolutely stunning. It has a more satin finish, which I personally enjoy. It's also very comfortable on the lips, which is something that I look for as well. I'm so past, beyond past the matte uh, phase. <laughs> and then the last lipstick I wanted to talk about, because you guys are probably like, oh my God, the so many lip products. I know, I know. It is the Dior, the Rouge Dior lipstick in the shade 100 and this is their satin finish as well. I was a little disappointed with this packaging. I think for the price point, it should be a lot heavier. I do really like this shade though. It's more of a light peachy moment and it pairs really, really beautifully with like a dark lip liner. Um, I love that color combo of like a light peach and a dark lippy, like, can you tell I have a type <laughs> shades? Um, but I really like this one. I will say this one it does have a fragrance, which I'm not a fan of fragrance at all. It does fade fairly quickly though, uh, which I am glad about. It's not long lasting, but I just wanted to mention it because I know there are a lot of you like myself that don't really enjoy that in this kind of a product. But I will say this is very comfortable on the lips and the formula is like so thin. It's really interesting, but it's comfy. It wears really well and I really love it. I could definitely see myself picking up another one of those. Next up, I wanted to talk about some lip liners. I discovered this year the Essence uh, Soft and Precise Lip Liner. I actually picked this up on one of your guys' recommendations and I'm so glad that I did because I really, really like them. They are, I will say they are soft though. Um, this is the shade Kaba right here. And then I have a little bit more of a brown shade that I just got not too long ago. That one out over there. And I like these because they're not, they're not necessarily super creamy, but they are soft. They go on really easily. They wear really well. Um, I feel like I'm going through it kind of fast because it's soft, but they're like $3. So that doesn't bother me. I think that these are a great value. Um, Hidden gem at the drugstore. Highly recommend a great product I discovered this year. Okay, next up is like an eye product. It's a little bit more on the random side, but one that I've really been loving this year is from Item Beauty and it is called their Boost Juice. And what this is, is a lengthening and volumizing like lash assistant. Um, the purple side is for volume and then the blue side is to assist for length. And I never like wore these kind of products before because I really didn't think they did much. I thought they were, felt like they were kind of hoaxy, 
but I've actually really noticed a difference with this one and I use it almost daily and I will probably repurchase it in the future. Um, it does, in my opinion, very clearly add volume. It also adds length as well. I just think it does a really great job. Um, and I was really excited to try it this year. And like I said, it's definitely one I think that I will pick up in the future as well. Next up, oop, I grabbed the wrong one. I wanted to talk about the Ola Hendrickson Banana Bright Sunkissed Face Primer. This is the one they came out with over the summer. And this is a self tanner with vitamin C and banana powder inspired pigments. And I love this because so in high school, I was on Accutane like more than one time. And so now my face doesn't hold a tan or really get tan at all. It quite literally just burns in the sun. So I wear like a ton of SPF on my face to avoid um, any kind of burning. But that means like no matter what, my face is always so pale compared to everywhere else to me. So this was a true game changer in the summer because I still wore makeup like every day. So I would use this as a primer. It is hydrating. It does a really nice job as a primer. My makeup laid beautifully over the top. But the thing was after the third or fourth use, I was starting to build a really beautiful gradual tan. And I loved that about it. I used probably like half of it. Well, almost half of it. And I will use the crap out of this next summer. It is so good. And what I loved about it too is that when I stopped using it, I didn't have to do anything special or worry about removal or anything like that. It faded off really beautifully, really naturally. This is one that I highly recommend. It is so, so good. Next up, we have the Pure Lease Perfect Glow BB Cream. And I'm actually wearing this today. I have the shade light. I really, really love this product. I love that it is oil free, but it also does not take away from the natural glow of the skin. I don't feel overly dewy. I don't feel overly matte. I think it's a really well balanced in the middle kind of situation. Um, the shade range is pretty meh. Um, but overall, like I just love the way that it looks. I love the way that it wears. I can get a full day wear out of this so easily. Um, definitely one of the best like base products that I discovered this year. I also have really been loving the Smashbox Halo Healthy Glow All-in-One. This is a tint. This is a little bit light for me right now. I have the shade Fair Light and I probably could have bumped up to the shade Light, but the um, shade range was a little weird. Uh, but I've really been enjoying this product because it is like a true tint. The coverage is really sheer to light, but it's glowy and it looks like basically your natural skin, but with like a little bit of a filter on it. Really, really beautiful. Really enjoy it. It actually has really long staying power, which I wasn't sure if that was going to be a thing or not, but I didn't have any issue with it holding up throughout the day. Uh, yeah, honestly, this put like Smashbox back on my radar because they haven't had anything that's interested me in like forever. So I was really excited to try this out and I'm really happy that I enjoyed it. This was a really, really good one. Okay, next up, we're going to talk blush. Uh, two, well, actually one blush formula, I guess, that I discovered this year that I'm absolutely obsessed with is the MAC glow play blush like this shit so good you guys obviously you can tell I've used the crap out of this um it is so unlike anything I've ever tried before the formula is like putty can you see my fingers like sticking in there it's like a putty formulation which is cool and it goes on it's kind of like cooling and it feels like um you can feel that it is putty and like moves to the touch. It's a very flexible formula. But then once you get it on the face and like this is a shade very, this one she's so natural and it's very natural blush. I really love it. Um, it dries down to be matte, but you still get that really beautiful, healthy glow out of it. It doesn't look like dried or powdery or anything. I also have the shade blush, please. 
which is that one right there. And this one hasn't been used as much just because we're just now getting into the season where I like to use these tones of blush. But formulation wise, these are absolutely incredible. Probably my favorite cream blush formula ever. I will definitely repurchase when I run out. They are just so easy to work with. And I love that they're really, um, they're really buildable. And I, I think that I like that in my products that I don't have to be as careful going in because I do have a little bit of a heavier hand, but I think that these are absolutely 110% worth it. So freaking good. Next up, I wanted to chat about bronzer. The first one, I actually did not like when I first got it. Um, I was so on the fence about it and most of it was because of the shade. It is the Huda Beauty Tantor. I have the shade Fair and it's just, the shade is definitely, in my opinion, um, a little dark to be fair, but once you get it blended out, it's not too bad right there. And what I really like about it is the fact that it does blend out really, really easily. The formulation is um, a little bit on the thinner side, which I think helps it to blend out better. And I really love it. Like you can see I'm getting quite the dip in this product. It's just so easy to use. The only thing that I wish is that they had a little bit of a lighter shade so I wouldn't have to be as careful going in with it because I mean, if I go in with a heavy hand, this could easily look too dark on me, but it does, it just blends out beautifully. And you know, I love the tone. I just wish she had a little bit of a lighter shade, but this has become a fave. Another one that I tried this year that I absolutely loved, and I was late to the game on this, I know. It is the Milk Makeup Bronzer in the shade Baked. I know everyone and their mom has already tried this product out, but it was new to me this year. And honestly, the hype is real. I feel like the hype is real, you guys. The tone is absolutely beautiful. I love it. I also love that I can straight up just take this product, draw it all over my face, and then go back in and blend it. And I don't have to worry about it like not blending out or getting patchy or looking muddy. It blends out absolutely beautifully and the shade is like perfect. I freaking love this. The same with the Nude Sticks bronzer. This one's in the shade Bondi Bay. Uh, another thing like I love about it is the tone. And you can see all of these have a slightly different tone to them. But I really love how user friendly this is. Similar to the Milk Makeup one, I can just, this stupid thing like doesn't close, I don't know why. Um, similar to the Milk Makeup one, I can literally just draw this on my face, go back in and blend it and it's gonna blend out seamlessly and look beautiful. I'm not gonna have any issues with it or anything like that. It does have this like brush down here at the end that I could do without. Would actually be really, really nice if it didn't have that um, because then, Honestly, the component would be a little bit smaller, but this is the first product I've ever tried from Nude Sticks and it has me wanting to test out their blush formulation because I really, really love this. Next up, I wanted to talk about a concealer that I really love this year and I only have one and it is the Dior Backstage Concealer. I have the shade 2N. I've used the crap out of this. Like you can't really tell, but I would venture to say that it's halfway gone or maybe more. Um, I love the applicator, how it's like a little paintbrush type of situation. Um, this does have a 12 month shelf life. It also just, I don't know, the tone is really nice on me. It's very like skin tone like, which is what I prefer in a concealer. This also is just really nice formulation wise. Um, I am, you know, getting older, so I have more fine lines and whatnot. And I don't find that this is so creamy that it sinks into all the fine lines. And it's not so drying that it like cakes up and crusts all the fine lines. It's that like perfect in the middle of a creamy and drying formula to where it just lays really beautifully. Also, I don't set my under eyes. Um, I don't know if that's helpful that I mention or not, but I find that this holds up really great all day. This is one that I would definitely repurchase and I highly recommend. I also wanted to mention the Danessa Myricks Chrome Flakes. My friend Jude, if you're watching, hi, um, sent me some other Chrome Flakes in Friend Mail, which I so appreciate. 
These are the shade Hot Lava. And these are so good, you guys. They have the most beautiful, like, green to orange to blue flip to them. And you literally can just apply them with your finger or even with a brush onto the eye. And they stick like glue, which I love. They're flakes, but, like, once they are on your eyeball, they're not going anywhere. And that's why I like them better than glitter because you get this, like, fun, colorful, shifty effect, and you don't have to worry about them falling into your eyes. I have picked up two other shades since she got me this one, and I, I love it. I just think they are so good and like so underrated. Okay, next up, I did want to mention one powder. I don't wear a lot of powder. Like I said, I don't typically set my under eyes, and I don't usually set my face unless we're in the summer, but one powder that I discovered this year that I really, really love is from Makeup Forever and it is their HD setting powder. I have the shade one. I really like this because I can go in with a puff and set under my eyes and it still looks nice. It doesn't get all cakey or creasy. Also, if you wanna be like the maddest bitch on the block, you can take this and put it all over your face and you that you'll be mad. Like your shit will be what? Um, or if you want, you can just take like a you know, light powder brush and powder it all over your face lightly and it looks beautiful that way as well. It really does, in my opinion, help the longevity of the makeup, which is, you know, when I'm looking for a powder or going to use a powder, it's usually because I'm wanting to extend the wear and I feel like this does that. Plus, I don't use powder super often, so this is going to last me a super long time. But I just wanted to mention that as like not a powder lover or someone who really uses powder, like that was a standout to me. I think it is beautiful. Last up, we are going to talk eyeshadow, you guys. So these are, I mean, I tried so many palettes this year. Um, when this goes up, I don't know if you've seen that video yet, but I'm ranking every single palette that I tried this year. These are ones that just like were stand out to me some of the best um I don't know or recall where they're gonna fall in my ranking video but these are the ones that I wanted to mention and the first one is from Natasha Denona it is the my dream palette I really just love this packaging it's different from her other stuff and it's still simple it's not too much or over the top it's really really beautiful I also really just think she did something great with this color story, you guys. At first, I was super unsure, but really, once I got it in my hands, it looks so much different in person than it did in the promotional photos, and it just, oh man, it performs so well. This flip duochrome shade, you see the green in the mirror there? is absolutely stunning. You can pair it with so many of the other colors in here. Um, I also thought this shade was fun and stunning yeah, and it's unique. It's not like a duochrome, but it is just very unique. Um, you get some really sparkly shades in here. You have a lot of deepening shades and you get some really unique tones. Like the tones of these two are so beautiful and so unique when they're swatched out or when they're on the eye. Um, absolutely stunning like I just feel like this one she really knocked it out of the park with the formulation with the color story and with the execution and it's easily become one of my favorite palettes in my collection this was such a good one next up is also from Natasha Denona I tried this one more at the beginning of the year this is the mini retro I think that this palette is absolutely stunning um <clears throat> it brings a lot to my collection and you wouldn't think so because it's just like a little five pan but this is probably like the most unique palette that I have in my collection because the undertones of these two mattes is so stunning especially when you get it on the eye and then these two are so sparkly reflective like glittery like this one is such a good one if I could recommend any of her minis I would recommend this one, I don't use it much just because it's not a color story that I reach for, but it really just, if you're, it really just stands alone in my collection on its own two feet because it is so unique. Like, I don't have these tones in any other palette. It's truly, truly stunning. Next up, I wanted to talk about the Spooked palette from Gourmand Girls and Doodle by the Bunny. 
I tried Gourmand Girls for the first time ever and I threw this palette and wow. Wow, 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 wow. It is good, you guys. Um, These mattes are probably some of the best mattes I've ever used. Not only are they easy to work with, even the purple, the black, the red, they maintain their vibrancy on the lid. They blend out beautifully. Um, they pack up. They, they pair with one another easily. They are just so easy to work with that I like couldn't even process it. I did do a three looks one palette with this, which you should have seen by now. If not, um, it'll be on my channel, but it is so good in the shimmers in here. Like, wow, they, and this is so like opaque and in your face. It is so beautiful, you guys. And the really cool thing about this was that like, I was able to create a pretty wide variety of looks, even just doing I think I, yeah, I did just do three. I was like, did I do four? No, I just did three. Um, but I was able to create some really loud, beautiful, vibrant looks, some grungy looks, and some neutral looks. So I think that this palette is so much more versatile than a lot of people thought. And it's one that I will continue to reach for because it is absolutely just stunning. Next up, I am fucking obsessed with the... <laughs> Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Dreams palette. Uh, the original Pillow Talk looked far too light for my liking. The tones were very light. This one is a little bit of a darker situation and I'm so glad I picked it up because these mattes are stunning. Like the tones are so beautiful. A lot of the times I just wear these two on my lid and I go matte. That's right matte. Mm -hmm. That's when you know it's good when I just want to do a matte look with these two and I've done that so many times but also if I want to spice it up and add something you know shimmery look at these freaking beautiful you guys. I was honestly like truly blown away by this. I did not expect to be so impressed by the color story and the formulation. Um, I will say the packaging is definitely cheap, especially for what you pay for it. So maybe try to find it on sale, but formula and color story wise, knock out of the park. Like whenever I'm like running late or need to be out the door, this is one I can easily grab for and I'll just do 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 and oh, so stinking pretty. I'm quite literally obsessed with this little baby. Next up, I have the palette, uh, the Soul Main 2 palette from Odin's Eye. This was the first time I tried Odin's Eye this year. And oh my goodness, I cannot believe I've waited so long. This packaging one is absolutely just, whoo. And this launched like, I would say, I don't know if it was toward the beginning. I feel like it was toward the beginning of the year, but I just got this like when this goes up, probably like a month ish ago. And the packaging is stunning for one, but this color story, bro, I'm not even that into colorful stuff, but this palette had me feeling so inspired to reach for it, to play with color, to do fun stuff outside of the box. And oh gosh, these shimmers, you guys, like they are something else and they are so sparkly, which I freaking love. Like it looks like glitter on the lid but without all of the you know anxiety and scaredness of having glitter on the lid so really really beautiful the mattes are also very pigmented easy to work with blend out I had like literally zero issues I think by now you'll have seen two videos with this palette but it is so good um if their formula is consistent then like I highly highly recommend Odin's Eye. Um, I definitely want to try more from the brand now that I know how incredible the formulation is. Next up, we have the Tom Ford uh, Body Heat Quad. And I was not expecting to love this as much as I do. I actually, it's what I'm wearing today. Uh, do I think this is worth $90? Absolutely not. The packaging is not that nice and it comes with this stupid thing where those brushes are. Who even uses that? We don't know. But I think if you could find this on sale or if you want to use like a Rouge Reward or a gift card or something like that, I think it would be 
worth it um, just because it is so unique. And you might be thinking, well, this color story doesn't look that unique, but it really is. Like, look at the tones on my eyes. And like this one pulls um, a little bit more of a purple and they almost have like a taupey undertone. And this is like a really red brown. It's stunning. And the finishes are like nothing else that I have in my collection currently. Um, they're like a shimmer metallic, but they work really well in the crease. They like, it just, it's so weird. I don't even know how to explain it. I'm hoping to do like a get ready with me full look with this in January. And hopefully by then I will have the words. But I just, it is so pretty. And the, the lights don't even do it any justice, you guys. It is so sparkly in real life. So I don't know. I mean, I've heard so many mixed opinions and hit and miss on Tom Ford that I was really like kind of expecting to not like this. But I love it. And unfortunately, <laughs> because now I'm kind of like, what else they got over there, you know? But this is really, really nice. And um, if you're thinking about dabbling in their quads, I would definitely recommend this one. And then the last item that is in the best of makeup that I tried this year is the Natasha Denona Glam Face Palette. This has truly just become such a staple, such a favorite. I have the shade Light. And I absolutely love this because it's like an all-in-one. Uh, I love the color story of the eyeshadows there. It's something that you can reach for and is easy, requires no thought process on what you want to do, which is what I love sometimes during the week or when I'm running late. Uh, everything is just so cohesive and you can actually do a multitude of looks with those just those five shades. Um, I would say you could probably get... I mean, for the most part, they'll be similar, but you could probably get four or five different looks out of those shades right there. And I'm a neutral lover, so I'm into that. And then this blush right here is just, look at that shade. Like literally, you guys, so pretty. And I know some people said they, they struggled with the formula and I I didn't have that problem. I think the formula itself is a little bit on the stiffer side, but I just used like my Fido um, brush go into it and I don't have any issues. It is a more buildable blush, so it starts out a little bit sheer and then you have to build it up, which again, I like because then it's harder to go overboard, but I just thought it was absolutely stunning. And then you get this really beautiful highlighter in here, which I don't really use that kind of highlight on my cheek, but I have used this on the brow bone and it is absolutely popping. I think a lot of people will probably like this for an inner corner highlight as well. I don't usually do that either, but overall, this is just a really good staple palette that I could see myself like traveling with. Um, the shimmer formulas in here are more sparkly than her normal ones. They're more of like a light foiled situation and they are gorgeous. They are gorgeous. Um, if I could, if I could recommend, you know, one Natasha Denona palette to you, I, I would get this one. Um, it, it's just so like, in my opinion, functional for the everyday like makeup lover, um, working person or just, you know, busy mom, whatever. I think that this one is a really, really great one. But yeah, Woo! <laughs> we made it. Uh, I feel like that is all of the best makeup that I tried in 2022. I tried a lot of shit, as you will see in my ranking, all the palettes I tried this year video. I tried a lot of palettes, um, but I've tried a lot and this is what I felt like was at the top of the list this year. Let me know what some of the best products were that you tried this year. I'm very curious to know. I did a poll over on IG asking people and oh my gosh, some of the uh, answers had me squealing. The same with I asked like the worst that they've tried. I might do a video sharing those answers because I think it would be 
really fun. Let me know if you would like to see uh, what you guys said was the best and worst of 2022. And I would love to film that. If you have made it to the end, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I appreciate you and I cannot wait to see you in tomorrow's video. Bye!